Hey, everybody, it's Sonia Blakey. I love you guys. <laughs> well, today is Relationship Talk Thursday, and because she's not in the studio, we thought we'd do it this way so I could still see her. Relationship <laughs> expert, Love McPherson, how you doing? I am doing well, Sonia. It's so good to see you, even if it's virtual. It's just good to see you. I know you, I know it is. And uh, we have a great topic today, you know, with uh, this was Sunday being Halloween. And <laughs> we thought that uh, we'd have some fun uh, with uh, some Halloween-ish type of uh, topics as it relates to relationships. And I love Nick Pearson is so creative. And so she has some hot topics that we're going to deal with today on Relationship Talk Thursday. The topic is couples living in haunted houses. Haunted houses living <laughs> in haunted houses. I'm already scared about this topic, but uh, Love McPherson is going to break it down. Couples living in haunted houses. So, what does that just mean? You know, just that title. What does it mean, Love McPherson? What it means, uh, Sonia, is that people are living in houses haunted by their past because that's what usually haunts a house, the things that happened in the past. Uh, that's why you have skeletons. That was people who, things that had died, but that have resurrected, things that are seem creepy and just unresolved issues that were in that house. And so we're gonna talk about the things of the past, things of your past that you have brought into your houses, that, uh, things that have happened in the house, that you have caused and that that have happened and have not died you have resurrected it and so we just want to talk about um just haunted pasts that okay. are sitting right there in your house haunting you every day in your relationships Woo! this is gonna <laughs> apply to everybody all right so uh love mcpherson let's talk about vampire mates i'm scared of vampires so uh, i can <laughs> see movies that have vampires in it so to have a vampire as a mate Tell us, love, what is that about? So what happens is with vampires, you know what they do? They suck the life out of you through your blood, right? And turn you into the same thing. But a lot of times what we have is we have emotionally draining mates. We have mates that will suck us dry, the life out of us. Why? Several things. Sometimes they're draining us through um needy behavior. Sometimes they are draining us through controlling behavior because you're just like, what, what do you want to control now? Why, why are you trying to control my life? Why are you inputting? Why is it never enough? Things like that, needy. Where are you? I need you. This, and it can be draining when it comes from a spirit of insecurity. It's not about neglect, but insecurity. Also, what is um, vampires, you know, it can be one drip of blood at a time. The Bible talks about the small foxes spoil the vine. And the moodiness can be draining in a relationship. If it's always a lot of moodiness, if it's a lot of resentment, unforgiveness, harsh behavior, contempt. Contempt is, is when you see people as less than you. So those small foxes boxes can drip can drain you drip by drip and then the last thing of of the the uh emotionally draining behavior is your communication people can can be drained because of your harsh communication because of your constant disrespect because of your demeaning behavior and what it does over time is it wears on a, a relationship and it literally zaps the love out of it. And you'll see people in a relationship, but they are the walking dead because the relationship no longer has life in it, is just completely drained. Wow, love, when you talk about this type of uh, vampirish type behavior, it's like, you don't even wanna come home. <laughs> is late at night you that's the truth father you like stay in your coffin vampire <laughs> <laughs> you so wear uh, what is garlic around your your neck right <laughs> all right so love in these type of situations like uh how do you get through it i mean do you you know do you say something do you bring in a therapist how do you reconcile these type of vampires behaviors when they're inside a relationship all of the above, and, and this is the thing, you have to recognize when your relationship is disconnected because disconnection is an actual thing. It's not just an emotion. It is an actual uh, uh, real thing. And so you can feel the disconnection, but it is not just a feeling. It is a state of being. And when you see that your relationship is in a disconnected state, because of the love uh, has been drained out of it, both of you all have to make some decisions to say, hey, 
we need to come back to each other. That's going to require us to humble ourselves. That's going to require us to heal. That's going to require us to make changes. You bring in the people who can help you make the changes. You get, bring in the word of God that helps you make the changes. All of those things put together and you give it your 100% effort in making the necessary changes. Wow. Thank you so much, love, for that. And let's get closer to this one, ghost of your past, ghost of your past, love. Yes. That. Now, ghosts of your past are your past traumas, untreated traumas, because what trauma does, and, and, and trauma is the Greek uh, word for emotional wounds. So the emotional wounds that can happen in your childhood, your teenage years, uh, just years ago when you were divorced or just yesterday. Those traumas don't go away until you deal with them. So they sit as wounds in your soul. They sit as wounds in your un unconscious and they begin to respond to your relationship. So when you have uh, childhood traumas and they are untreated, those are like ghosts because they, sh they show up, they rise up, and you thought they were gone away because they're, they, they're not visible all the time. But when something happens and somebody says something, all of a sudden the little wounded girl is responding. The wounded boy is responding instead of the adult who realizes you can't talk like that to me or you can't do that to me or you shouldn't be so insecure. And so what happens is we have to realize sometimes if there's past domestic violence or uh, even in dating, you know, ghosting and, and, and a bad breakup or a scandal that happened in your relationship, betrayal, uh, date rape, um, uh, you, you know, abandonment, rejection, neglect, uh, alcoholism, poverty, all of those will sit as trauma in your um, inside of you and they will respond to you and, and respond to your mate and respond to you. That will be your trauma responses that you have a relationship with your husband. And those are goals. We've got to treat those things. We must address them because the Bible talks about, it says that, you know, the heart is deceitful. Who will know it? Why? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so when we are speaking, we are speaking through our traumas. We are speaking through those emotional wounds. We have to make sure that we go into through the process of healing, through counseling, through uh, excavation of what happened to us, through deliverance, through prayer, all of the above we need to be doing in order to excavate those ghosts and put them out of our bodies and out of our homes. You got it. I uh, remember folks saying that hurt people hurt people. Absolutely. So when you're in a relationship like that and you're dealing with such deep wounds, you'll uh, play that out in your relationship. And uh, what a painful situation to be in, Love McPherson. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, let's move on to Cracked Mirrors. I'm here with Love McPherson, Relationship Talk Thursday. We're playing off the Halloween theme because Halloween is this Thursday, I'm sorry, this weekend. And uh, <laughs> couples living in haunted houses. So right now we're gonna talk about Cracked Mirrors. Nobody likes Cracked Mirrors. Absolutely, but that is, some, that is something you'll see in haunted houses are cracked mirrors. And when I talk about cracked mirrors living in your houses, it's because you have a distorted image of yourself. And so sometimes the distorted images that you feel less than sometimes is that you feel more than you are. And so what happens is when you feel distorted images of less than, there can be insecurity that ar arises, imposter syndrome that may arise where you feel that, you know, I'm not as good as you all think. So you hide and keep people at bay because you don't want them to get too close and actually see your flaws. And it's really emotionally, it's just mental, uh, that you you have uh, created in your mind because you really are that good, but your mind will not allow you to accept the, you know the, the what you really are. Um, you, then if you've had um, people telling you that you were not or their behavior displaying that you're not enough or you're not worthy, then you'll have distorted images of yourself until you go back and rectify that. Sometimes, like I said, you will have uh, you will think more highly of yourself than you ought. And you'll say, I'm a good husband. I'm a good wife. Well, yeah, you're a good provider, but you're not a good emotional support. You are good domestically. You can cook and do all of that, but you are harsh 
with your language and how you disrespect and demean and emascul emasculate. And so, and then sometimes people will have a distorted image of their, their parenthood. I'm a good father. Well, yeah, you're good to your child, but you're not a good uh, example because you're a serial cheater. I'm a good mother. Yeah, you're a good mother. You take you can take care and make sure they're there. But you are uh, uh, because of the the moodiness and 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 all of that. The the child is learning these different behaviors. So we have to take a really good image and of our of a, a, a look in a real mirror, the mirror of the word of God, not some distorted crack image. We have to look in the mirror of the word of God and not look into somebody else's mirror, but our mirror and make sure that it is aligning with what we are supposed to look like because we were created in the image and likeness of almighty God. And when we allow that to be cracked, when we walk away from that image of love, of, of, of compassion, when we walk away from that image that God has placed upon us, then we are living with cracked mirrors. Wow. Love, I love these. I love these analogies. Today. <laughs> and let's get to our last one. Unexplained voices. Like you're hearing these voices. Absolutely. You know, and that is very, very common. What happens is there is a lot of negative or self-defeating self-talk that we tell ourselves. And it's because of the things that we have heard in the past. If you were raised by a parent uh, who was very critical or who was very negative or who was verbally abusive, a lot of times what you will do is you will incorporate those voices in you to create your identity. And so be, you will actually practice the same um, messages to yourself. Man, I'm so stupid. Wow. You know, things like that, that you will say to yourself when you mess up. And a lot of times what happened was in 2020, when we were all in isolation, the worst part for that isolation was the fact that we had to sit back and isolate it and listen to ourselves. And we did not like the voices that we were hearing. And so when you hear those unexplained voices that are that causing you to sabotage relationships, that are causing you to not go as far as you can professionally, that are causing you to uh, self-medicate with drugs or alcohol or sex or any of that stuff, any of those unexplained voices, the voices that Satan has planted in your spirit and you are rehearsing and reciting because he will sit voices of condemnation for your past mistakes, for your past, I was, you know, if you were once addicted or you once had a baby out of wedlock or you have gotten divorced, he will remind you and then you will begin to repeat that. And so those self-defeated, self-sabotaging, condemning voices of your parent, of yourself that you have incorporated into your everyday living, we have to silence the voices. We, and the only way to silence those voices is to create new uh, messages. We have to create new messages based on what the word of God God says we are. And that is, we are made in the image and likeness of almighty God. I am more than enough. I am a, 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 a God's creation. God loves me. I, all of those things, we have to show grace to ourselves. We have to forgive ourselves. We have to be talking well, because if we don't, we will put people, the way that we will handle our mates is even when they are complimenting us, we can't hear it because the voices that are haunting our homes and haunting our bodies will speak louder than their compliments. We will, or we will demand extra compliments from them. And we will demand from them the compliments we won't even give ourselves. And so we're trying to fix the holes in our souls externally when that is a job that has to be done internally through the word of God, through confessions, through repetition, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As a man thinketh in his heart, not in your conscious brain, but in your heart, so are you. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. So if you're telling yourself you're stupid, you're telling yourself you can't, you really believe that. And you've got to reframe. Uh, and, and what does the Bible say? And how do you change? By the renewing of your mind. We have to reconfess a new uh, database inside of us that is on autopilot that we speak daily. Wow, love you have set us free today. 
No more haunted houses. We 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 gonna be free. We gonna break out yes, of this thing. Yes, we put this stuff out. Okay, Ghostbusters. <laughs> oh, who you gonna call? The Holy Ghost Buster. Yeah, Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah, we'll put you out have the some, other ghosts. Yeah, <laughs> you, there are so many situations that we deal with, and thank you so much for enlightening us and you know helping to set us free. Couples living in haunted houses. Of course, the playoff of this being Halloween weekend. And so Love McPherson, you're always excellent at what you do, relationship experts. So the topics we covered, vampire mates, ghosts of the past, cracked mirrors, unexplained voices. Woo, no more. No, no more. more. <laughs> <laughs> Love McPherson, how can we follow you? How can we uh, get counseling with you? Tell us what you have coming up. What you want to do is follow me on uh, Instagram or Facebook. Facebook is Love McPherson. Um, also, you follow me on Instagram at love underscore McPherson. You can go to my website at lovemcpherson.com and you can join my group, The Workplace. Uh, unfortunately, I'm, I'm full as far as accepting individual clients right now, but I have a master class that's coming up of in uh, just a couple of weeks. And it is, guess what we, what it is? It is free, free, free. We love free, right? And so it is sponsored, but we want to make sure that we realize that this, uh, this class is free and we want to make sure that we attend it. It's the last one of the year. It's going to be amazing. And we're going to talk about self-love during the holidays. Now, we just talked about Halloween, but we're going to be talking about Thanksgiving and Christmas. If you know you go through crazy around the holidays, you don't want to miss how to take care of yourself during this season. All right. Excellent. Love McPherson. Thank you so much. I will see you again. Yes, you will. <laughs> All right. God bless.